In the last example, we were looking at uh, someone that's uh, falling, well, me, um, being dropped off a cliff and landing um, with, on the ground with a really high speed. It was like 280 something uh, kilometers per hour. And I just wanted to uh, tell you something about that, is that that value, it actually isn't exactly true. Uh, so here we were calculating that example based on having no air resistance, which means when I'm falling through the air, uh, we're assuming that there's no air resistance, so then I could keep accelerating. But in real life, of course, there's something else. There's air resistance. So I would have actually going, uh, been going uh, slower because I would have reached terminal velocity, which sounds really dangerous, but actually just means I can't accelerate anymore. So uh, we're going to be doing a video uh, that talks about that in more detail in a little bit uh, later. But I just wanted to make that clear. So now it's time to take a look at graphing, because that's something that comes up very often on exams, but it's also a really nice uh, way to see um, physics and math coming together really nicely. So in this example, um, it doesn't really matter what I consider. This could be, let's say, well, my last name is Campbell. So um, I, uh, I liked to do this little experiment in my class where I would actually take a can of soup and I would roll it up a hill. Okay, so um, I roll a can of Campbell's soup. That's a type of uh, soup. And we'll say up an incline. In other words, some line that is inclined. In other words, some sort of hill. Uh, maybe I shouldn't be doing that um, gesture too much, but um, this is something that actually goes up a hill like this. There it is. There's my little can. And what I do is, of course, I give it a push so it goes up the hill. And what I would do is put a little detector at the bottom here. Okay, so the little detector, it detects the distance from the can uh, to itself every second. So it's, uh, it's kind of neat. It does a little sonar thing. So you could actually have this on a little stand. Basically, I would roll the can up the hill. And if you know anything about... Um, hills, you know what's going to happen. You don't even have to be a physicist to understand this. The can is going to go up the hill and it's going to slow down. It's going to stop and it's going to roll back down. So let's take a look at what the graph of displacement versus time would look like. Okay, so there I'm going to show you that graph here. So maybe I'll uh, try to graph it nicely here. So there'll be displacement versus time. And remember, displacement is written with a, uh, this letter here. I'm going to actually leave myself a bit more room here, sorry. I'm going to make this actually positive for now. Uh, so what will happen is at time t equals zero, this will be in seconds, and this is going to be in meters. So at zero seconds, my can is at the bottom, so there it is. Now at some point, it goes, I mean, as time goes by, it's going to go up the hill, which means it's going to get farther away. So in this case, at some point in time, uh, it's going to have some sort of maximum height. Maybe that's this, like whatever this distance away is, that's going to be its distance here you know, from the start point. Keep in mind it's projected at an angle, but I don't really care too much. I just want to show roughly what the graph does. Now, of course, it starts here with a speed. It eventually stops at the wherever it stops. It eventually reaches its own maximum height. Then it comes back down, which means the distance away gets smaller again. So if I made this, uh, this many units, then it would reach the ground again at this time here. It has to be symmetric. And that means in a, the curve is actually going to do this. And the cool thing is, if you did this with this little uh, type of detector, you really do get a graph that looks like this. Now well, that's kind of cool. But even better is uh, taking a look at the next two graphs. So there I'm going to take a look at the velocity of this can as a function of time. So I'm going to graph that now, right here. So there I'm going to graph time in seconds still, but here I'm going to have velocity, which is in meters per second. I'm going to maybe put a little vector symbol on top of it. Uh, maybe I should separate these. Ah, that's fine. Well, yeah, I better, uh, I better put a line here just to make sure that we know that we're on a different graph, although actually that may have actually made things look more complicated. But, oh well. So if we take a look at this example here, uh, what I can do is take a look at, at this point when it starts, how fast is it going? Well, it has a positive speed. I don't know what the speed is, but it's, it's something positive. So I'm going to arbitrarily put it maybe here at whatever some value it is. 
Now, at some point, of course, at the top, its speed is zero because it stops. So that means, remember, this graph looks at speed. So that means at some point, the, the y value is going to be zero. And that happens precisely when this right here happens. So you take a look at this. It's going to happen exactly here. I did a dotted line so that I could make sure that these two line up. And then, of course, at another time, it's going to actually be negative. So it turns out that's because it goes back down the hill. So if I was really good at drawing straight lines, this would actually be a perfectly nice straight line graph of the uh, velocity. So this is what the velocity would do. And furthermore, I can go one step further and say, well, what does the acceleration look like? And it turns out that's going to be really good because well, it's going to be easy. So it's going to be in meters per second squared. I'll just get out of the way so you can see it. So it's going to be in meters per second squared. And in this case, it's going to be just uh, some negative constant value. Ideally, it'll be something negative here. And if you have the right kind of lab conditions, you can actually have this value right here be negative 9.81, which is kind of neat. In other words, that would be the acceleration due to gravity. Um, it's not always exactly negative 9.81. It's actually maybe something different. But the key thing to look at here is what do these graphs actually do? Okay, so the, the key thing here is that the graph does this shape here. When it goes up, it does this shape right here for its speed. And it does this shape right here for its uh, acceleration. Now the reason I drew these like this uh, this is dependent on the situation. So if I had a different situation, maybe I'm driving in my car, the graphs won't necessarily do this. So why did I bother showing you these graphs? It's because these three graphs are related to each other. And this is where uh, calculus comes in. Although uh, the IB physics course is not supposed to be a calculus based course, but this is calculus. I'll show you that. So calculus is all about uh, looking at either the slope of a graph or the area underneath a graph. Now the slope, some people call it the gradient, but uh, it doesn't really matter. You can call it the slope or gradient, it doesn't matter. As the Danes say, de lima. So it doesn't, doesn't matter at all. So the slope doesn't matter um, whether you call it gradient or slope, but what's important though is taking a look here. If I take a look at this very first graph here, I can take a look at what its speed was, um, and I can get the speed graph based on how the displacement graph looks. In other words, if you give me a graph of displacement, I don't even have to know the situation. I can draw this graph. And that's because I know how uh, velocity is related to displacement. Velocity is just a change in displacement. Some people write it as V equals you know, delta S over delta T, which means a change in uh, displacement over change in time. So what I can do then is take a look at this and say, well, that means that any time, this is a, a nice trick that I like to use here, is that any time I go down in a graph, so to speak, okay, what I mean by that is if I start with a displacement graph and I want the velocity graph, I'm going down, so to speak. Same thing will happen if I'm given only a velocity graph and I'm asked for acceleration. Then in a sense, I'm going down. If I've drawn these three graphs, you know, displacement, then velocity, then acceleration. If I go down, I take the gradient or slope. Right? That's what it's sometimes also called. Now, if you want the calculus word, this is actually called the derivative. So I use the calculus word, but it's not a bad thing. It's just called a derivative. So if you, if you know calculus, you can actually uh, find an equation for the derivative. But if you just want to draw it, which is, you are expected to be able to draw uh, these kind of things and use them uh, in the physics SL class. So just keep in mind, going down means take the gradient or the slope. Can you see right here that if I had a little line, let's say um, I'm looking at the gradient of this curve at any point. Over here, the gradient is this. It's like, that's what the slope is doing. Over here, it's a little bit different. Over here, however, it's flat. Over here, it's down. Over here, it's steeper down. I guess I should do it like that. So that means at this point, look at the slope here. The slope is all about you know, a change in height over a change in time. In other words, rise over run, some people call it. So that means here, at this point, the slope is zero. 
So that means the value of the velocity is zero. Do you see over here at the beginning, the slope was some positive slope, some value. Who cares what the value is, but it's some positive value. So look over here, I make y a positive value. Of course, the slope gets less and less as I go along, so the value gets less and less. And it goes all the way like this. Because of course it comes back down, so there the slope is negative. And it's a negative not very big number over here. Over here it's a bigger negative number. Over here it's even bigger negative number. So see, it's an even bigger negative number. And I can do the same thing with the uh, acceleration. So in this sense right here, as I go down, take a look. This one right here, is the acceleration is just the slope of this graph. Well, take a look. The slope at this point is this. The slope at this point is this. The slope at this point is this. Because the slope never changes, it's always some constant negative value. That means the acceleration will be some constant negative value. Now, conversely, we can do the same thing by, by going up. Okay, so in this case right here, if we go up, there we take the area under the curve. In other words, if you want uh, calculus terms, we actually do what's called the integral. So what that means is, let's say I'm given a graph of, I don't know, velocity, and I want to find the displacement. I just have to take the area underneath that curve, whether it's positive or it could be negative, it could be here, it could be here. So that's how this stuff works. You can use graphs in order to tell you what happens, and the graphs are all related to each other. As long as you write a displacement, velocity, acceleration graph, then you can actually figure out what's going on.